All right, guys, you guys have asked me a lot of great questions. And the architect who put together those Dallas Cowboy teams, can you win a Super Bowl by running the ball, having an efficient quarterback? And the way they ran last night, doesn't it remind a lot of people of what Jimmy did and Coach Johnson did back with the Cowboys when they had that fabulous old line and an efficient quarterback, great on third downs, Troy Aikman, great coaching and a great defense. Can you win Super Bowls that way? And how good are the Eagles? Let's bring in our friend from the NFL on Fox, Hall of Famer, my coach. Coach, how you doing? I appreciate you doing this, Coach. Thank you. I know <laughs> you got out west out there, and I thank you so much for doing this for me. All right, Dan. Good to talk to you. Coach, what you saw last night and what you're seeing with this Eagle team, last night, ninth greatest rushing game in NFL history, 255. He goes over 300 total yards. First guy since 77 to do it, and that's Walter Payton. People are asking the question, Coach, it kind of reminds them a little bit of your Cowboy teams where you had a dominant old line a tremendous running back, and Barkley's kind of been rejuvenated here, and an efficient quarterback and an improving defense. Can this team win the Super Bowl with this style? Well, I, I think they can. You know, yeah. and, you know, don't forget, you know, we had the number one defense in the league, and so anytime you play great defense – um, that's going to allow your offense to have that many more chances. And when you've got explosive players on offense, you know, that gives you a chance to win any ball game that you go up against. Coach, do you think Jalen Hurts is an elite quarterback? Um, I think with a great supporting cast, he is. Uh, I don't, you know, at times I'm concerned a little bit about his accuracy underneath, but he's an outstanding runner and he, he throws a good 50-50 ball, and he's got the receivers to catch those 50-50 balls. Coach, when they brought in Vic Fangio, I had Coach Wanstad on with me a couple weeks ago. And scheme coach versus young players, how do you match that up when you're bringing in players to try to fit a scheme? You were the big 43 guy. I know Dave said that, you know, he kind of recommended a 34 to you. And you looked at him and you went, we're going to run the 43. <laughs> and it was, you guys were 1-15 in 15 that year, but you went, no, we're going to stick to what we do here. It just seems, Coach, that Vic Fangio coming in here, he, he creates roles for these players. Like when you had Charles, uh, Charles Haley, you brought him in, and I don't really think that San Francisco used him the way you used him when he was in Dallas. I mean – how important is his scheme, or is it the Jimmys and Joes that make that scheme work? Well, I think the main thing, and the great thing about Vic Fangio is he teaches fundamentals. Uh, you know, they're a base defense, and, you know, when you don't get too complicated, you're able to make adjustments with your defense. Uh, when somebody starts hurting you with certain things, you know how to adjust your defense. Uh, the other thing is the more times you can do it, uh, the better you're going to get at it. And, uh, and so, you know, I think the main thing with Vic and with Philadelphia is they're really playing a fundamentally sound defense and the players know how to adjust. Coach, tell me if I'm wrong on this. Being around you for all these years and being around you on the sideline, you know, I don't ever remember you really getting into people's asses when it came to in-game. You got in our asses Monday through Saturday, and you were you were a guy that allowed their coaches to coach, and then you got on the coaches and all of us Monday through Saturday, and you corrected the mistakes then, and you allowed the coaches. When you see Nick Sirianni and the way that he coaches, do you see a little bit of that because allowing the assistant coaches to coach? And it, was that your system on how you looked at each game day? Because, you know, you handled timeouts, you handled – the uh, possession of the clock and all that and how you handled that. But it really came down to your assistants having and, and being empowered and coaching their players. Well, the critical time for coaches is throughout the week in preparation. If you have the players prepared in the right way, then on Sundays or, you know, whenever you're playing the game, uh, you make the situational adjustments uh, and you try to be upbeat and positive with your players and give them confidence uh, but the preparation is the main thing throughout the week. And that's when the assistant coaches and the head coach 
uh, motivates those players to practice hard and to prepare themselves in the right way. And then, on, like I said, on game day, it's situational decisions. Coach, I'll say this. A couple last questions here for you, Coach. Um, I made this comment on draft day, and I haven't seen a player, and I haven't said this about a player coming out of the draft. Um, I don't think ever really until this year. I compared Jalen Carter to Jerome, and I said this. I saw it on draft day, quick feet, quick hands, tenacity, dominant at the point of attack. You're seeing him take on double teams, splitting them, really having kind of a mindset. And when I see him, Jalen Carter, you know, we're going to have Tony Dungy at 430, and Tony obviously coached Sap. And I guess there was a conversation what he told Jalen Carter a couple weeks ago, but he's really picked his game up. Do you see a little bit of Jerome in what you're watching with Jalen Carter? Yeah, of course. As you know, Dan, you know, Jerome was an extremely talented player, uh, and Carter's the same way. You know, uh, the, the only restriction on Carter uh, is Carter himself. Yep. As long as he is motivated and as long as he is given great effort and prepares himself in the right way, then he's going to be a dominant player against any team that he faces. Coach, did you know, when did you know from the 1-15 in 15 year that you were heading in the right direction, not the next year, but the year after, that you thought you had a Super Bowl team? Because this team's really young. Two new coordinators on each side, Kellen Moore on the offensive side. Then you turn around, you have Vic coming in, and you have a lot of new players. Cooper DeGene, you have Quinion Mitchell back there, free agent, and Zach Vaughn. When did you know, Coach, that first Super Bowl season? I think we got something special here. Or did that play out all the way? Because Michael was on a couple weeks ago, also said, you know, we really didn't know how great we were until we beat San Francisco. That's when we knew. Does it evolve like that, Coach? Well, you know, I, I think it's a matter of just a, a steady building. You know, that first year, we actually made some moves. You know, had we not made some of those moves, we could have won three or four games. But we made moves that first year that was going to allow us to get draft picks and players in the future years. And we steadily built that football team. And I think Michael's right. Uh, we knew we had the Super Bowl one when we beat the 49ers out there in San Francisco, because we felt like they were the best team in football at that time. But that particular day, uh, we beat them at their place. And once we won that game, then we knew we were going to beat Buffalo the in the next ball game. And so we knew we had the Super Bowl. But we, you know, I, I don't know that anybody can, you know, uh, 100% sure say, hey, we've got a Super Bowl team. But I think there's four or five that can say, if we play our best, we'll have an opportunity to win a Super Bowl. And right now, there's four or five teams out there that can do it. Two last ones, coach Detroit or Philadelphia. Who would you be leaning to right now if you had to pick? the better team right now in the NFC? That's a hard one. I, I love what Dan Campbell has done uh, with Detroit. And I, I look at his football team, and I don't see any flaws. Uh, obviously, losing Hutchinson was a, a big blow to them. Uh, but they have a great football team on both sides of the ball. I love the way Dan coaches. They're a physical football team. And, you know, when you've got a physical football team, you can beat anybody. Uh, as far as Philadelphia, as far as pure talent, I think I would match Philadelphia's talent with anybody in the league. Uh, so those two have to be the favorite. But we, we still got a lot of games to be played. And, you know, in this league, you know, once you have some injuries, if you have injuries to two or three key players, that can affect you and how, you know, how you're going to play and if you have an opportunity to win the Super Bowl. So if those two teams stay healthy, uh, either one of them would have a shot. Absolutely. And the Eagles just lost last night, unfortunately, Brandon Graham last night. And he had a heck of a game last night as well. Absolutely. All right, Coach, I'm going to do something here in closing here that you used to do. How about them hurricanes? <laughs> hey, 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 Coach, man, I mean, Mario's done a great job recruiting. I mean, you know, they had a slip up against Georgia Tech. I mean, Georgia Tech's not an awful team. I mean, I, I, I'm a voter on the top 25, Coach, and I'm like, how does Notre Dame get ahead? They had a horrible loss to Northern Illinois, you know, at home. They're six and five. So, again, it's, maybe that's just me and Notre Dame still, Coach, going back to the day with us. But, 
you got to be proud of what Mario's doing down there yep. at uh, Miami right now. First 10 win season in a couple of years, second in only 21 years. Yeah, I'm I'm really happy for Mario. You know, he's an outstanding recruiter, and that's the whole key to college football. In college football, it's recruiting, and pro football, it's coaching. And uh, you know, I'm I'm a little disappointed in in uh, Miami's defense and that they're giving up some explosive plays. Uh, but I'm really proud of the players that he's brought in. I love Cam Ward, and I think they've got an outstanding football team. Uh, it's going to be interesting to watch them play. They got to beat Syracuse, and that won't be easy on the road and of course then uh, if they can beat Syracuse and then they're going to have SMU after that be another difficult one but I'm wishing them all the luck in the world and keep those players healthy and playing at their best. I, Tony hey, Tony White was on a couple weeks ago. I, I saw Tony on there. He's a trip. <laughs> hey, so I go like this holy cow. I go I've got to tell you what coach said. Coach wants that's over his shoulder. I go Jimmy said that the best coach I mean the most important coach that he has on his coaching staff is the old line coach like they have in Philly with Jeff Stoutland. And, and, and Dave looks down and goes, he said that? <laughs> well, yeah, my, my cohorts on Fox NFL Sunday, Howie Long and Michael Strahan disagree with me, but uh, I think that's the one position coach that's more important than the players themselves. Uh, normally those players are the ones that are making plays, but an offensive line coach is extremely valuable. And he can get that group playing well. And sometimes they may not be the most talented, but as long as they're in coordination, uh, they can be very effective. Coach, have a safe trip back. I appreciate you doing this for me. You always find time. God bless, Coach. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Okay, good talking with you, Dan. You bet. Jimmy Johnson from Fox NFL, and we really appreciate him coming aboard with us there. Hit the like button. Jerome was a special player. And you see some of the intangibles, okay? You really do. You see some of the intangibles. And Jimmy, before he took off to go back to Isle Morada, said that he would do it. He's in a hotel. By the way, he's going to make an appearance each and every single month from now on all the way to the Super Bowl. So we're going to get Coach Johnson on with us. We're really looking forward to that each and every single month. All right. The MVP conversation. That got heated with Xander, myself, and John McMullen. Ken Barkley win the Most Valuable Player Award. We're going to hit on that. Do me a favor. Hit the like button. All supers go to the top. By the way, give me a running count where we are right now when it comes to the like button right now. Where are we on that like number right now? Tony Dungy is also going to join us at 4.30 Eastern, and we're going to catch up with our friend um, Xander. That'll be at the top of the 5 o'clock. All right, 352. You think we can get the 500 today? What do you think, Xander? You think we can get the 500 today? Let's see if we can get the 500. Hit the like button. Keep it here. National Football Show. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.